Of all the disgusting things in the world, slime is usually high on people's lists. Sticky, gooey, and trembling, slimes, especially the living variety, have become staples of horror and gross-out entertainment. But despite its gross appearance, certain types of slime may offer us answers to some of science's biggest questions. How do we create artificial intelligence? How do we design infrastructure with optimum efficiency? And did the dog throw up on the floor again? That last question was raised when Redditor PDAM noticed a patch of mysterious slime that kept reappearing in the exact same spot outside his house for over two years. At first, he thought he might have a serial puke prankster problem, but it always reappeared in exactly the same spot, and no one's aim is that good, right? PDAM took to the trusty subreddit r what is this thing for answers. The response was mixed, some users suggested it was cyanobacterium, like the Nostoc commune algae, or gelatinous lichen, while others attested with confidence that it was a gravy spillage, or the spilled contents of a nearby trash can. Unless there's a notorious gravy bandit loose and causing havoc in PDAM's town, those final options seem a little unlikely, mainly due to the regularity and identical appearance of this strange goo. In fact, most people hypothesized in the comments that the blob was a variety of slime mold, specifically the Fuligoseptica, or dog's vomit slime mold, an apt name given its appearance. So what if it is slime mold? How can we tell? And more importantly, what the heck is slime mold anyway? Slime mold is a lot like a Toyota Prius, ugly, but with a lot of cool stuff under the hood. It doesn't have eyes, ears, or a nose, but this weird little life form has been a hot topic in science communities for a while now. So what's all the fuss about? There are around 900 known species of slime mold on Earth, and these amoeba-like life forms usually live in moist terrestrial habitats like forest floors and decaying wood. Interestingly, despite the bright fungal appearance of certain varieties, slime mold is not a fungus, nor is it a plant, an animal, or a bacteria. Though not all slime molds are related to each other, they are often grouped together in the protist family. Slime molds are eukaryotes, organisms with a nucleus enclosed in a membrane. And what makes them so fascinating is that the expansive vein-like networks that often surround the goopy blobs are in fact mysteriously unified collections of millions of individual nuclei. The bizarre thing is, these huge collections of individual organisms, which collectively can reach up to several square meters in size, are not controlled from a central point or brain. They work together with an intelligence of enigmatic origin and use their collective mind to overcome difficulties. Their ability to do this is shrouded in mystery, but scientists have a few ideas. Stick around to hear what these are. So. Was slime mold responsible for Redditor PDAM's perplexing patch of pavement pudding? The evidence is mixed. The puddle's appearance does bear a resemblance to other slimy organisms like Nostoc commune and gelatinous lichen. However, Nostoc commune and other algae tend to require standing water to flourish, something they'd struggle to find on a pavement. And gelatinous lichen tend to be much darker in color. However, if PDAM's mystery blob is Nostoc commune, he could always scrape it onto a plate and give it a taste, as the algae is eaten as a salad in the Philippines. Of course, there's a chance that the gelatinous puddle could be a spillage of bin juice, perhaps from a neighbor clumsily taking out their trash, but the regularity and consistency of appearance suggest otherwise. PDAM describes hosing the blob away on a number of occasions, but to no avail, it always returned in the same patch. This backs up the claim that it may be slime mold, as hosing away slime mold is the last thing you want to do. A clever built-in feature of slime mold is that it releases spores in all directions when water droplets like rain hit it. Being hosed down, thousands of spores would be released nearby, allowing the slime to reassemble itself like a gelatinous T-1000. Raking or brushing the area and mowing the grass around it would be PDAM's best bet as this would break up the slime mold cells and spores, making them less resistant. Or PDAM could make like the members of the r slime mold subreddit and take it home as a pet. Just don't expect it to roll over. With slime mold looking like a viable answer to this internet mystery, what's got scientists and redditors alike so excited about these weird little blobs? The reason slime mold has become such a common topic of discussion across the scientific world is really one thing. It's intelligence. 
This slimy substance is so smart, it can solve mazes, plan highways, you can even train it. In a 2000 study carried out at the Biomimetic Control Research Center in Nagoya, Japan, researchers placed slime mold inside a maze. At the end of the maze was slime mold's favorite dish, some oat flakes. Researchers watched as the slime mold spread itself out through the entirety of the maze, scouting it out. Not only did it find its way to the oats, it also retracted itself from the dead end paths of the maze, leaving a chemical no entry sign for itself. On top of this, within mere hours, it streamlined itself into paths of optimum efficiency and found the quickest and most effective route by which it could distribute the food's nutrients amongst itself. If that doesn't impress you, how about the other experiment carried out at Hokkaido University in Sapporo, Japan in 2010? which suggested slime mold might deserve a place on a city planning board. Researchers laid out oats in a petri dish, arranged to represent the major cities on a map of Tokyo. They added high intensity light sources, which slime molds hate, at points where real life obstacles like mountains or lakes would be and allowed the slime mold to do its thing. In a few hours, you've gotta give the little slimy guys credit, they only move one centimeter an hour. The slime mold had not only formed clear nutrient transport paths between the oats, it had also recreated the layout of the Tokyo transport system almost exactly. The slime had calculated the most efficient transport routes, including carefully chosen points where multiple transport lines should join up, something which had taken human engineers more than a century. Still not impressed? Bearing in mind that slime mold has no brain or central nervous system, being instead a collective of individual organisms, this next experiment becomes all the more impressive. Working with the slime mold viscerum, scientists in a controlled environment at the same location, Hokkaido University, increased and lowered the temperature and humidity in a repeated pattern. As the temperature and humidity dropped, the slime mold slowed its movement to conserve energy. After several cycles, researchers suddenly changed things up. They followed several regular cycles of changing environmental properties with a period of consistent humidity and temperature, and the slime mold actually slowed its movement in anticipation of a change in temperature and humidity. This not only suggests that slime mold is able to learn, but also that it is able to sense the passing of time, and even more incredible, it is also able to pass this habituated learning habit onto new cells that join the blob. But how can such a primal organism with no brain possess such complex intelligence? Well, scientists aren't quite sure yet. This phenomenon, known as swarm intelligence, is one of the most mysterious, incredible, and promising natural phenomena on Earth. The more we learn about it, the more is revealed about the nature of consciousness itself. Though we don't know much for certain, researchers believe that slime mold's way of moving may give us some hints about its intelligence. Slime mold's motion is triggered by chemical movement inside its cells. Water, moving in wave motion, carries calcium back and forth within the nuclei, triggering contractions in the cell walls. As the cells squeeze themselves, they're able to inch forward bit by bit in a constant oscillating state of expansion and contraction, exploring and testing their environment as they go. The organism's slug-like slime spreads out initially, mapping its environment and forms pulsing chemical transportation veins across the paths where food is guaranteed. And the hungry blob's relationship with food is also central to its intelligence. In fact, starvation seems to be the key underlying principle governing communication in slime mold. These organisms are able to function alone, but when a lonely cell begins to starve from a lack of food source, it sends out a distress signal, a chemical cry for help, and other nearby slime mold cells will answer the call by coming and fusing with it, dissolving their cell membranes and melding together. While the individual nuclei remain intact, the more cells that join this blob the more potent the chemical homing beacon becomes, and there's no limit to how many individuals can join the collective, known as plasmodium. It's in this form that the magic really begins to happen. In this much larger, slug-like form, the slime mold can move much faster than an individual cell, and it creeps along with strange, pulsating movements, seeking a food source. As its tendrils probe its surroundings, any food that is found, be it decaying vegetation or another microorganism, is enveloped and digested with secreted enzymes. If the food sources are eventually depleted, the slime changes form again in one incredible final act. 
In an example of altruism rarely seen in nature, some of the cells will offer themselves up as sacrifices, forming long stalks and dying in the process, to create platforms which other cells climb, accumulating at the top into growths which emit spores. These spores are carried on the wind or by other creatures to continue the slime mold's legacy in a new colony. The intelligence that Slime Mold has evolved to possess seems then to be directly related to its ability to find food and work as a collective for the greater survival of its species. As a collective, with its ability to create external memories using chemical communication and tendency towards optimization, Slime Mold is surprisingly useful for our own intelligent designs. The same aesthetic rules that govern the formation of Slime Mold networks can be seen everywhere in our world. Look no further than the remarkable fractal patterns of river deltas, blood vessels, lightning, and neural pathways for obvious parallels. It's clear there are some benefits to self-organization of this manner. Otherwise, they wouldn't be so common in nature, the most cohesive system of all. But the question is, how can we use slime mold to our benefit? Perhaps the most obvious is the potential to use slime mold in planning trade and transport routes. Slime mold has already replicated and even pointed out improvements on the transport networks for the USA, Canada, England, and Spain, among others, making it a valuable tool for such a task. Plus, unlike a computer, it doesn't need plugging in. As long as you've got a petri dish and a few oat flakes, you're good to go. Speaking of computers, Professor Andrew Adamatsky and Teresa Schubert have promoted Slime Mold's potential use as a type of organic computer. By adding dyes and magnetic nanoparticles to a slime network, Slime Mold has already been used to create basic logic gates, and researchers stipulate that this could eventually lead to the binary operations that govern computers. There's also a lot of potential use if we can crack the algorithm that governs Slime Mold's decision-making abilities. We could implement this decoded set of rules into artificial intelligence networks of our own creation. Slime Mold's impressive ability to respond to disruptions, as well as its adaptive decision making, could prove extremely useful in AI transit systems, as well as self-driving car networks. Further advances in the vehicle and robotics realm could benefit from looking to rudimentary life forms like Slime Mold perhaps taking inspiration from its unusual movement style to develop a gooey robot that can stretch itself into tiny cracks. Your body, for example, for the administration of medicine, checkups, and even treatments. It can even be used in the creation of strange and mesmerizing artwork, which has already been adopted by experimental artists like Heather Barnett. The mysterious properties of slime mold force us to rethink what constitutes intelligent life which could come in handy as we look up to the great abyss of space in search and speculation of extraterrestrial life. Would you keep a slime mold as a pet? Can you think of more interesting uses for these clever little blobs? Let me know in the comments section down below and thanks for watching.